Why do wrenches make it so much easier to tighten bolts? Why can't we just use our hands to tighten them? The short answer is torque. But if that means nothing to you, let me explain. In this video, you'll learn about torques and moments. Moments are related to forces and are the next step in understanding how to design buildings, structures, and devices. By the end of this video, you'll fully understand moments and torques. So, firstly, why is it so difficult to turn a bolt? If you've ever tried tightening one by hand, you'll know that past a certain point, it feels like you need to use more force, even though you know it isn't fully tightened. That's because as much as you turn, the bolt turns back. Stay with me here. Remember Newton's third law? For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Well, that same principle applies here, but this isn't a force, it's a torque. Simply put, torque is the tendency for a thing to rotate, in the same way the force is the tendency for a thing to move. So, the more you tighten a bolt, the lower its tendency to rotate is, because bolts are designed to turn back once you fully tighten them. But wait a minute, if a bolt doesn't turn anymore once it's tightened by hand, why can we tighten it more with a wrench? Well, let's look at the physics of a moment. A moment is a rotation caused by a force being applied at some point that doesn't pass through the axis of rotation. So for any object, if you apply a force that doesn't apply through its axis of rotation, you apply a moment. More specifically, the moment, or torque, acting on an object is equal to the force applied onto the object multiplied by the distance that force is from its axis of rotation. Now you might be thinking, if Newton's third law holds true for moments and torques, then do the other two? Well, let's look at Newton's law and see if we can learn anything from them. Objects in motion remain in motion unless acted upon by force. This motion is due to the velocity of the object. In the same way that an object has a velocity it moves at, it also has a velocity it rotates at, known as angular velocity. We measure this in units of radians, which are a unit of measuring degrees that make it easier to do math and physics, over time in seconds. If you've seen my video on forces, you might know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Well, in that same vein, objects have an angular acceleration, which determines the rate of change of the angular velocity, or how much the angular velocity changes over time. We measure this in radians per second squared. Now we almost have a full direct analog to view moments in the same way we see forces, but we are still missing one crucial element. Do we just plug mass into the moment formula? In the formula given by Newton's second law, mass as we know it is more precisely referred to as the mass moment of inertia. Here's the smoking gun there's also a rotational moment of inertia. In the same way, an object with more mass or a higher mass moment of inertia has a lower tendency to move given the same force, an object with more rotational inertia has a lower tendency to rotate, and we denote rotational inertia with the letter I. And just like that, we've translated Newton's three laws of motion to rotation. Firstly, an object that is rotating will not change its rotation unless a moment or torque is applied to it. Equally, still objects won't rotate without a torque applied. This is because in order for them to change the rotation, they need a change in angular velocity. But if there's no moment, then there is no angular acceleration to change the angular velocity. Secondly, moment equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Is it becoming clearer now? Let's take a look at the wrench again. Now it makes more sense. So since we are applying the force, at a greater distance from the rotational axis of the bolt, more moment is applied, and the bolt can turn more. So even though we apply the same force when turning it with our hands, there's a lot more turning that goes on with the wrench, and we finally have a full picture of moments and torques. If you found this video useful, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Be sure to comment any questions you might have below, and let me know what other concepts you would like to see covered.